In this video, we're going to continue with the Computer Science AS Level Curriculum 9618. Earlier this week, we posted a video on how to do assembly language and working with assembly language. And in today's video, we're going to use that assembly language and actually complete a trace table. Let's take a look at our learning targets. So our learning target is simply this, trace a given simple assembly language program. So we're going to run through a lot of different ones so you can be ready for anything that comes your way on the Cambridge exam. Okay, on the first one, uh, this is from a past uh, paper exam. So here they have not been very uh, descriptive with the op code. So LDD says load using direct addressing, but you may be saying, well, what, what is direct addressing? Store the contents of the accumulator at the given address. That's pretty easy. LDI, load using indirect addressing. You may be saying, well, what is that? LDX, load using indexed addressing. What is that? So we'll be going over a bunch of uh, different ones uh, today. Now on the exam, uh, over the past few years, they've been pretty generous giving you descriptions uh, for all of them. Rather than just say load using direct addressing, they actually give an example of what that means. Um, we'll take a look at some questions like that later, but let's dive into this one. Right on the diagram to explain the instruction shown. Show the contents of the accumulator after the execution of the instruction. So we're looking for LDD 105. LDD means load using direct addressing and the operand is the address. What that means is, is we're not gonna load 105, we're gonna load the contents of the address 105. So I go over here, I look at 105, here it is. I'm gonna load this data right here into the main mem or into the accumulator, not the main memory, it's already there. So then I just simply write that binary number 001, 00, and another zero, and then a one. And what I want to do is I want to pick up two points. Here's how I pick up two points by writing inside what the accumulator will have, and then I simply draw an arrow to 105 showing uh, that I did it correctly. That will give you uh, the two points. Um, let's move on to another one. This LDX uh, can throw students for a loop because it says load using index addressing. You may be saying, what in the world is that? Well, it's the address plus what we call the index register. Well, the index register is right here, and I'm looking at this value, and you may be saying, well, how in the world do I do it with this? Well, what is the binary value of this? This has a, a denary value. I said binary value, I meant denary. What is the denary value of this binary number of this machine code? It is three. So I'm gonna do 101, because that's the address they want me to use, but they want me to add the index register which is three, and that means they want me to use address 104. That is what we mean by load using indexed addressing. We take the address they give us, we tack on the index register, which in this case was three, 101 plus three is 104. So I look over here at 104 and I see it's 0101. So I'm gonna write that down in my accumulator because I'm certainly not gonna try to memorize all eight binary uh, numbers here, and then 1101. And it is that simple. And just like that, we have picked up, whoops, let me go back. We have picked up four points on the exam by simply using the address. We add the index register, we get to the right address, and then we populate the accumulator. And what the reason Cambridge will do things like this is to make sure you're not guessing. We have a whole ton of addresses here. They want to make sure that they're eliminate the possibility of you just randomly uh, guessing. So that's why this one's four points. You got to calculate the value of the index register. You got to tack it on to the address they gave us, which was 101. Have to get address 104, actually show address 104, and then pulling those contents out and putting it inside the accumulator. So that's how some of the old ones went. They could always go back to these and you need to know what index, indirect, direct addressing is. And we'll go over all of those uh, today. Let's take a look at another one because that's the only way we're going to get uh, good at this. Now, this one is worth uh, five points and this one's a little more involved. Just because it's a little more involved doesn't mean it's harder. All we're going to do is follow the directions they give us. One of the best pieces of advice I can give you when working on these is to shut your brain off and do what a computer would do. 
Just go line by line. When you start trying to do multiple things at one time, it's very easy to make a mistake. Okay, so on this first line here, nothing's gonna go here. That's because we're showing the state of 507, which is uh, 22. It corresponds with these addresses up here. 508, for example, is 170, which I have here. 509 is zero, 510 is zero. So when we do LDD 507, that is the first line we're gonna do. That is direct addressing, which means it wants us to go to address 507. When we go down to 507, we load the contents of 507, which is 22. I write that in my accumulator. And now the hardest part is over. Sometimes the hardest part is just getting started. So LDD, that's done. I go to the next one, which is INC. I look up here, add one to the contents of the accumulator. Well, the contents of the accumulator are currently 22. I'm gonna add one and I get 23. I have incremented the accumulator, so I check that off. Then we have STO. STO says to store the contents. And this is the important part. It's the contents of the accumulator at the given address. We are not storing the value 509. We are taking the accumulator and we're putting it in address 509. So I'm taking 23, I'm not putting it in 507. I'm not putting it in 508. I am putting it at 509. So 23 goes right here and I have stored the value of 23, the accumulator into 509. Now I look at the next one, LDD 508. Now, I have to look at here, 508 is 170. I'm gonna load that into my accumulator. So I'm gonna write 170. They want me to increment. That's fine, I can do that, 171. And then it wants me to store it into 510. So I'm gonna take 171. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna put it in address 510. And now I have reached the end of my program nothing happens. The program or the assembly language simply ends. Now, uh, this one worked out nice because they gave us just the perfect amount of rows. Sometimes they will, sometimes they will not. If you have rows left over, that doesn't necessarily mean you did anything uh, wrong, but that's an easy way to pick up five points. Now, let's take a look at one uh, again. This one is LDD66. And I have LDD, and notice the operand isn't a number, it's gonna be an address. It says load using direct addressing. Well, right here. I'm gonna to go to 66, and all I'm gonna do is load this binary number, one, zero, one, zero, and one with three zeros behind it, and just like that, I've picked up another easy two points. All right, let's just Keep moving on. So this one is um, another one. So I'm gonna let you do this one here. So notice we have LDI 61. Use using indirect addressing, which we have not done yet. If you look at your, um, you should have a sheet or if you look back at the video that we did with indirect addressing, let's give this one a go and see what you come up with. So go ahead and pause. All right, so hopefully you got the right answer. So let's walk through how to do this. Maybe you're just unsure how to use indirect addressing. So they want us to use 61. Indirect addressing at address 61 shows the address of where they want us to go. Well, you may be saying, well, I don't see the address 0100 with four zeros. You may be saying that is not an address in here. And I would agree with you. But what is the binary or the denary representation of this binary number? 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. We don't have any of those values. However, I do have the value of 64. And indirect addressing means, hey, I want you to go to this address stored in address 61. So we go down to address 64 and that is what we are going to load. So we're gonna do zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero, one. And you'll notice this one is three points. And the reason this one is three points here is because you have to know indirect addressing, the address they give us, which is 61, holds the address 
of where we want to go. Well, they gave it to us in binary. That's no problem for us. We can do that. So we simply convert this to binary. We get 64. That tells us, hey, we want you to go to address 64. We jump down to address 64. That is the data we want to load. So that is indirect addressing. Let's go ahead. Let's take a look at another one. Ah, this one right here. Um, very similar to what we just did this time. The only difference is they gave us only two memory addresses uh, to work with. We're going to start right here by using LDD208. So I'm going to get you started. I look at 208. I see the value of 208 is 150. I'm going to put that in the accumulator. I've gotten you started. Go ahead and pause here and let's see what you come up with. All right, hopefully you paused and uh, gave this one uh, a try because it's the only way you're going to get uh, good at it is by trying. And remember, even if you get it wrong, you're still making progress. You're learning uh, how it works. We're going to check this off. LDD 280 is done. Now, you are not required uh, to check these off. I do because it's very easy to get lost when you're tracing this assembly language. Now they want us to increment the accumulator. Not a problem. We're always going to increment it by one. There's never an exception uh, to that rule. That is literally what the assembly language INC uh, means. And if you're unsure, you can always look. You can always look up here, add one to the contents of the accumulator. Now, uh, we want to store that in 208. So 151 gets stored into 208. Now, I want to pull, I want to bring something to your attention here. 208 no longer has the value of 150. I can no longer use 150. And what I would suggest you do is, um, or yeah, it doesn't have the value of 250. I would come up here to 208. I would cross this out and write 151. Because if 208 shows up again and we look up here and see that it's 150, we're going to get it wrong because it's no longer 150. We updated it with this line of code right here that says store the accumulator into 208, which is 151. Uh, now 208 doesn't appear again, but that's okay. LDD 207. Look right here. 207 is 16. I'm simply going to check that off. They want us to increment the accumulator. Not a problem. We're going to do that. Now you may be saying, uh-oh, we're getting close to the end. I'm getting a little nervous. Store in 207. We store 17. And just like that, we are done because the next line of code is in. Nothing happens there. And we just picked up four points of the 75 on our Cambridge exam. Let's go ahead. Let's do another one. Uh, so this one right here, you'll notice the table description is a lot different. This is something they've done on the more recent exams. They literally tell you what to do, which is very, very nice and generous of them. They don't have to do that, but we need to know what these things do. We got to be familiar with them. One of the most common mistakes students make is they say, oh, I'm going to get that on the exam. I don't need to study. I'll know what to do. But if you haven't worked with these, they may be a, it may be a little uncertain of what happens. So here's our assembly language. And what they want us to do is simply fill this out. Now, this is an easy uh, four points, and they're all easy points once you know what you're doing. So let's talk about what happens. So we have two registers. We have the accumulator and the index register. We're going to look at LIX 200 because we're looking at the first four addresses that they want us to uh, do, and then we have some things down here. So we look at LIX, and then it says the address. Load the contents of the address to the index register. So we're going to take the contents of the address 200, which is 3, and we're going to load that into the index register. And there is a point. So LIX 200 is done. LDD 201, we look up here. LDD, they, we're doing something with 201. Direct addressing. Well, that's what the last one said, but now they're telling you load the contents of the given address to the ACC. So a lot of times students are like, well, do I load 201? I'm not sure. Well, it says load the contents, the contents of the address. This is the address. What are the contents of 201? And that is 216. And when I look here, it says we want to load that 
to the accumulator. So I write 216, and just like that, we just picked up another point showing Cambridge who's boss. Now we have LDI 201. So here's LDI, and we're going to do something with the address 201. Indirect addressing at the given address is the address to be used. Load the contents of this second address to the accumulator. So when I look at LDI 201, it says go to 201. When we go to 201, we see 216. This is the address it wants us to go to. It says load the contents of this second address, 216, to the uh, accumulator. So that is uh, 96. So I'm going to put that right here. So I'm going to put that there. And then I'm going to try to get this uh, off of here. There we go. And then we're going to uh, move on. Now I got this nice streak going across my paper, but uh, who cares? LDX 201. So LDX index addressing form the address as the address plus the contents of the index register. Copy the contents of this address to the accumulator. My index register has the value of three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 201. I'm going to add the index register, which has a value of three, and that gets me 204. I go to address 204, and I see 63 is there, and I put in 63. And just like that, we have picked up another four points on our Cambridge exam. Let's take a look at a couple uh, more. So this one, I'm going to allow you to pause, says the instruction at address 102 is fetched. So 102 gives us LDD. So we, we are going to use this address right here to show what happens after execution. So go ahead and pause here, give this one a go. All right, so LDD means use direct addressing. So we're gonna directly load the contents of 203. What's in 203? 77. Where does, it, where does that get loaded? That gets loaded into the accumulator. What do I do with the index register? Nothing. You do not put in zero. If you put in zero, that is giving the index register a value. There is no code here after 102 is fetched to give the index register any value. And remember, zero is a value. So all we do is pick up an easy two points. Let's take a look at another one. Um, and this would be the table we have. But because you're here watching this video and you're going to be familiar with it, we don't even need this. But if we wanted to double check, and it's always good to double check, you can. All right, let's take a look. So this is the last one here. This is going to be uh, very similar to what we've done. Now, a couple things here. We know that IN is input. We learned that from the last video. If we want to increment, look how generous they're being. They're telling us what to increment, the accumulator. We have STO, which is to store. We have IN, which is input. We're going to increment the accumulator. We're going to add 109. Now, we need to talk about this specifically. You want to be on the lookout. Uh, for this right here. Then we have STO 110, output, and then we simply in. Go ahead and pause here and give this one a try. All right, so you may be saying, ah, the accumulator is uh, one. No, it's not. It is not one. You may be saying, well, how in the world am I supposed to know what the user is going to input? We simply read the directions. There's a lot of information given in the directions. And this one says the user inputs 19 followed by 37. If we miss that, we're going to get this whole question wrong where we could have easily picked up five points. So inside the accumulator, we have 19. And I am done with my first input. Then it wants us to increment the accumulator. That's fine. 19 plus 1 is 20. Now, they want us to store it at 109. Currently in 109 is nothing. It is not zero. There is nothing there. But it doesn't matter. We're going to overwrite the contents of whatever was there or whatever wasn't there with the accumulator. And I put in 20. And I'm done storing 109. Now, you may be saying, oh, we have another input. We've done 19. What we need to do now is 37. So I simply write 37. That goes in my accumulator. I'm going to increment my accumulator. 
that is also done. Now it says to add 109. And sometimes students can get uh, a little worried here. They're like, I'm not sure if they want me to add the number 109 or if they want me to add address 109. Or, and they may be saying, well, they, I think they want me to add 109, which is not true. Because the number one mistake students make when they're going through these trace tables, especially in a high stress situation like a test, you'll see there is no 109 address listed here. So a lot of students say, well, there's no 109 address. They want me to add the value of 109. That is not what they want you to do. They want you to add the address of the contents of address 109. If they wanted you to add the number 109, you would see this code. You would see add number 109. Zero, 09. That would mean actually add 109 to the accumulator. Now you might be saying, well, there is no address 109. I see 100 to 108. Here is address 109. What is currently stored in 109? The value of 20, which we did right here on this line of code. So we're going to do 20 plus 38, which is 58 showing Cambridge that we're not going to fall for any trickery. Then they want us to store it in 110. All right, fine, I'll store it in 110. 58, I'm done with that. They want us to output it, not a problem. I'll output it. And here, we have an extra column left over. That's okay. They're just making sure that you're not uh, using the process of elimination or guessing. The way this is graded is they want to see that this accumulator has these values in the right order. They want to make sure 109 only has one value, the 20, and wants to make sure 110 only has one value, the 58, and then that the output happens at the very end. Hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to help the channel grow. If you have any questions, please post a comment below. We'll see you guys in the next video.